you guys, Kyle the Death Metal Enemy here, bringing you my review for Dragon Ball Super episode 119. And I'll start off by saying the beginning fight of Vegeta and Ka and that Kamen Rider Power Ranger guy from Universe 4, I think it was. I think it was 4, yeah. Or, no, it was 3, I think. Yeah, 3. It was actually kind of funny because, especially when, when the Kamen Rider said, when, when the Kamen Rider was talking to Vegeta and saying it, it's basically, it's impolite in order to, or to interrupt someone, when, interrupt someone, uh, from someone when 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 they're when they're talking or something like that, and we just said, "Fuck that shit!" Like, uh, like honestly, like that whole thing. It happened with the rebrand stuff before, but I feel this is like Dragon Ball almost further, furthering a little bit of a trend of mocking their own tropes and whatnot. Like, yeah, just 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 the back and forth in, in the fight of Vegeta and and that Kamen Rider guy. It really. It really felt like it was Dragon Ball's mocking itself again, just like it was doing with Rebrand, and yeah, it, it was just funny to see, to be honest with you. And uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's like it's like they're mocking their own tropes of the villain spouting exposition and exposition and charging up while all the heroes just wait around for them to finish and whatnot. So yeah, and was just saying, screw that, I'm, I'm not gonna wait around. It sounds like yeah, they're mocking themselves. Um, <clears throat> but other than that. Uh, yeah, I, I also, okay, so, aside from that, I do have a bit of a major issue with this episode, and I know things like gauging an opponent's power was thrown out the window a long time ago with Super, <clears throat> but this episode really raised the question, how powerful on a physical scale, like a physically, physically powerful scale, does that invisible, does that, did that invisible fucker have to be in order to send go, send Send a fighter like Gohan, flying so far that they that they nearly fell off the stage, and they, they fell off the stage and, and nearly got eliminated, eliminated if Piccolo hadn't been there. I mean, <clears throat> with Vegeta it was a little more, <clears throat> it was a little more believable because he was already standing near the edge of the of the arena. But with Gohan, the dude actually kicked him with enough power to fall off the stage and almost get the fall disqualified. Like, basically, from from the distance that Gohan was to basically, in order to the traveling distance in which he, in which he fell off, it was it wasn't a short distance. It was it was a pretty long distance. So like, it made me question. I know it's weird, but this kind of made me. I know it's weird, but it almost kind of made me question the the really like the physical dynamics of of the whole thing, like how, like how can, like 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 how can someone have that kind of physical power in order to. In order to kick, in order, to, in order to kick someone that fucking far, like seriously, it really, it really, made, it really made me question because the, the distance between which Gohan was kick, the Gohan was, and the distance in which in which the end of the ring was, it wasn't a short distance. So like, yeah, no, <clears throat> it's weird to question, but this really made me question the dynamics of that, of that whole situation. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> but yeah, again, it it really just left me. It was a small detail, I know, but it really had me pondering and scratching my head, like, how's that possible? <laughs> but, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, so, Universe 4 got eliminated, and to be honest with you, it couldn't have happened sooner. Like, honestly, I think, I think Universe 4 getting eliminated, it really should have happened even before Universe 6 got eliminated, to be honest with you. But, it is what it is. And especially, like, especially considering the God of Destruction that rules over Universe 4, I think I think I think I think it is quit 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 Quitella. Yeah, his his name his name is Quitella, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Quitella, the guy Quitella, like his like the god of destruction of Universe Four, of Universe Four, the that guy, the right, the mouse guy, he really fucking he. Like the thing I, I have against 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 against, against Catella as a character is that people often say that Shampa is an was an annoying character, but at the very least there was an likability to his annoyance. With this with with with, with this guy with this guy with this guy with this guy with this guy, guy Catella, it was like every single week that every single week that, that he was on screen, I was like, when is this guy getting erased? Like honestly, I. Like honestly, Catella as a character was just annoying from the very get go. Like honestly, like uh, he he's a character that just really makes me say when, like during this whole tournament. Again, I was saying this name. I'm repeating myself. I know, but he said every single time he was on screen, I was like, please just erase this fucker already. I yeah, he's he's just fuck. He's just fucking annoying. And honestly, I wish he got. 
I think, yeah, he just should have gotten eliminated a long ass time ago for me. And, uh, and honestly, it didn't really help the, and honestly, it didn't really help in this episode that universe, that, that this that this whole episode made me see Universe Four in general almost as the universe of cheap tricks. I mean, but I mean, I would still give it credit that the, that the fights in this episode made me with the Bug Warrior and the Invisible Man. They give me somewhat nostalgic feelings from Dragon Ball and early Dragon Ball Z, specifically with the early Dragon Ball Z. Like the the fight with the Bug Guy, it very much reminded me of the um between the Bug Guy and um and the end of Seventeen and Goku. It very much reminded me similarly of of the of the little training exercise between of this training exercise between between Goku and, and I think it was Gregory at the time. So yeah, in that sense it did kinda have similar <clears throat> that similar effect on me, but yeah, it, but uh, that's like the only that's like the only problem we're gonna give Universe Four to be honest with me, is that, is that those that these current that these fights give me kind of those nostalgic feelings. But other than that, Universe Four as a whole, they've just been like yeah, I I'm just glad they're gone to be honest with you and <clears throat> I'm just glad they're gone and like honestly, in general, I just really would have taken them getting erased over Universe Six, but yeah, but yeah. And um, speaking of eliminations, Piccolo also got eliminated in this episode, and which honestly, I'm sort of on the fence with Piccolo's elimination because, in one way, yes, he definitely got his moments before he was taken out. So I don't necessarily have a problem with whether or not it would have, whether or not it, sh it should have happened because we we both. I, I kind of assumed it would have happened eventually. It was just what's going to happen happen before he gets eliminated. So I'm happy he at least got his moment before he got eliminated. But what the problem I have, but so I don't have a problem with whether or not he sh he should it should have happened or not. But th the problem I have is with is with the speed at which it happened. Like like the speed at which Piccolo was eliminated. I have been doing a double take. Like oh, so Piccolo got eliminated. Okay, like, like I said, I don't have a problem with him with with him getting eliminated, but it happened so fast, my mind couldn't register or even process that it even that it register or process properly that that he got eliminated. Like it happened so fast, it was like, huh, what? what, what happened? He got eliminated. Okay, <laughs> like yeah, it was. <laughs> it left me kind of yeah, it left me kind of reeling almost. Like okay, so people got eliminated. Okay, yeah, like, like I said, I don't, again, I don't have a problem with the elimination. It was just, it happened so fast, I couldn't properly process it. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Now, with, now this, now with Universe 4 gone, that leaves Universes 3, 7, and 11 remaining. So, only three Universes remain. And the way this whole three, three, this way, this whole this, this, this whole standoff between the three remaining universes was has been set up in in the remaining couple of minutes of the lot of this episode. It really made made it made, made it kind of kind of seem like Universe Seven and Universe Eleven really will be the last universes standing. Like again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, but Toei really is building up that whole Goku versus Jiren rematch. And even then, I'm not even sure there's going to be a clear winner. I think the whole fight with it will basically t take up the remaining time that the remaining time of whatever is going to be left when the fight actually gets kickstarted. I think whatever remaining time is is left is going to in the tournament of power, and like the, the I think it's going to end with with both Universe Eleven and Universe Seven being pretty much the last one standing, because unless Unless these next, um, unless after Universe Three is eliminated, then we are going to get some some episodes with, some episodes with um, some episodes with the other, with the members of Universe Seven fighting other members of Universe Eleven. But uh, but yeah, like, but yeah, I'm I'm really thinking that Universe Seven and Universe Eleven really are going to be the last universe standing. Like, I don't think Universe Seven is going to be. I don't, I don't think Goku is gonna be is gonna win this fight. I think it will be just him. I think it will just be him and Jiren basically just fighting until pretty much the clock runs down. I think that's pretty much how it's gonna how it's gonna be. And it might seem anticlimactic, but honestly, it'd be a nice change to be honest with you if it happened. Uh, yeah. And uh, one one thing I do like in last thing I want to say is one thing I do like in this episode 
is how it implemented the strategy of defeating an invisible pawn from Dragon Ball's fortune teller Baba Saga, but instead of blood, they're using the dust and smoke from their attacks, and if you think about it, this strategy was actually a really clever use of one of the show's oldest concepts, like the attacks that can cause explosive aftershocks and whatnot, because I guess before, like, I didn't, aside from the fact that, that the fighters would always use those as, as, I guess, cover or something, I never, re I never really saw, like, the, the aftershocks, aftermath of their attacks, aftermath, dust clouds or whatnot of their attacks as anything special, but, and just, and just saw it as, like, a cool effect or whatnot, but here, th those, like, aftershocks and those dust clouds actually have, actually have more of a purpose than just, just for cover now, so, yeah, it's, the, for something I only saw as a cool visual, is was, was a neat way in, in order to use the, in order to use the dust clouds and whatnot, so, yeah, but, yeah, guys, that's pretty much our review, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter or Facebook, that's Night of Anime, signing off, later.